Good morning. How are you today? Good. Well, your energy in the studio. Kapow. Yes, because it's Thursday tomorrow. That's yeah, why. the weekend is ahead. Every week we say this, but we, we love it here, really, don't we? Yeah, yeah of course we do. Of well, course we do. And we <laughs> love to hear from you listeners. So today's subject is actually one of you out there, I hope you're listening, you know who you are, asked me this question, so I thought I'm going to make it a topic. Okay. It's pretty basic, sounds simple. Please don't turn over. It's warm up and cool down exercises. Okay. Because in my job, I see a lot of people in gyms, obviously, and I have seen all kinds of crazy warm up exercises. <laughs> you see all kinds of crazy workouts. I've as well. seen, yeah, I've seen all sorts of crazy clothes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, I've seen, seen boil- I've seen boiler suits in gyms. Oh. Um, but also I've seen non-existent warm ups. Yeah. Yeah. And cool down. So we're going to talk about that today, Laura. You're a gym bunny. <laughs> Why do we warm up? Do you have any idea? Well, I'm guessing if you're walking into the gym and you've been sat all day or all morning or whatever, your body's just not ready to... It's not going to perform at its best capacity Absolutely. if you haven't warmed up. You need Absolutely. to kind of awaken the muscles and... You do. And I, bones, it, it, there's, you there's two reasons behind it. There's a physiological body reason and there's a psychological reason. I'm going to get to it. Like a little bit like a car. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we go and put our car on. In the, in the UK, we'd put the car on to warm it up in the <laughs> yeah. winter. Here, we're chilling it down. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you put that car on, the engine has to get a little bit warm to get running smoothly. Yeah. yeah without any kind of like jerky reaction. So physiologically when you go to a gym yes you're completely correct you have to warm your body up warm your muscles up your tendons your ligaments and gradually increase your heart rate and increase circulation to your muscles so when you increase your heart rate blood goes faster around your body this takes blood all the way to muscles that need it and therefore those muscles respond really well and they help to carry you through your exercise okay psychologically you're psyching yourself up Mm -hmm. you're here to work out yeah? yeah if we just trudge into a gym with this kind of bad attitude oh can't be bothered you're going to keep that attitude if you don't warm up and get yourself in the zone mm-hmm. that's what we say yeah okay the zone. so that the ever chasing the zone we are exactly so the importance <laughs> of warm-up is you know it is that is effectively very important so it's generally best to allow your um body to warm up slowly so i always like to say to clients at least five ten minutes of a warm-up if not 15 even 30 minutes if you have time you could mm. genuinely walk and build up to a slow jog a little bit more of a walk and then if you had a training session that person could come or, or you would continue with your other exercises but take your time don't rush it this is your body yeah and often if you've been to a gym and you've had that sore muscles the next day mm. it can often come from either you're not used to exercising or if you're used to it, you didn't warm up or cool down properly. Yeah, so it comes from that. We're going to get to that, though. So like I said, give yourself at least 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes. Gradually walk, jog. Um, a few years ago, people had an idea that they should do static stretching, which is just holding stretches, okay, in a warm-up. Mm-hmm. Actually, we do this now at the end. Instead, warm-up should be dynamic. That means movement. Yeah. Yeah? So you might see runners on TV at the Olympics or something, and they're, they're sort of jumping and, and getting themselves riled up psychologically and physiologically. So you should be doing that. You shouldn't just be standing, holding a stretch, and then go running crazy, yeah? You should be dynamically stretching. So exercises. So the best type of exercises you can do then are simple things like jumping jacks. Yeah, anybody can do that. Use a skipping rope. Anything that makes movement. I just think a treadmill, although it's boring for a lot of people, it's a good warm up. Mm. So it's a cross trainer. It's a really good way you're using all your muscles. A bike is only really using the legs. So not so much. You're looking at using the whole entire body. So that's what we want you to do. Um, And this is best performed before you start your exercise. So one of the best ones I would suggest is high knee walking. So high knee walking is obviously lifting your knees all the way up high. And then continuing on. This is very common with sprinters. You may have seen this on TV, yeah. Yeah. They're getting themselves ready. So obviously, you know, the purpose of that is to bend your hips and your knees, stretch your glutes, which is your bum, Mm -hmm. and your hamstring, which is the thighs at the back there, and um, your quadriceps, the front thighs. And everything just gets moving, gets those legs ready up, you know, ready to move. Something that's quite important as well when you go to a gym is to think about what you're going to be doing. So dynamic stretching is normally in tune with your exercise of choice that day so if you're going to be using your arms to lift a lot of weights for example you would therefore use a cross trainer to get your arms pumped and get your arms moving yeah so think of it like that with your body approach your gym session like that 
what am I going to be doing today? You know, if you're not got a trainer, a trainer's job is to do that for you. Mm -hmm. But if you are on your own, a lot of people here are training on their own. Think about what you're going to be doing. A lot of us out there are running. Yeah, it's quite a common sport. Get some calories off, Mm -hmm. lose some weight, get your cardio up. If you're going to the gym just to run, fine. Take it slow to begin with. Do these high knee walking and take that into little wee jogs as well with your knees, lifting them up along the way, okay? You can also do trunk rotation. So you're twisting your torso to the side. Use your arms, pull to each side. It's important that you move your body in all range of motion. We don't just bend forward, do we? We bend Mm. back, we bend to the side, we twist our trunk. So move your trunk around. And this helps with abs as well. This is a little bit of toning as well when you're twisting your trunk. Use your hand, use your fingers, loosen everything. I like old spaghetti arms where you twist from side to side and you kind of let your arms flap from side to side. I I love love it. I always think you look like a kid in a a playground. Like like your arms are just (laughs) falling by their side but you know you've got to think about everything from fingers to toes here this is important you've got to loosen everything up all right and one of my favorite that i like to tell laura to do is butt kicks ah yes all right so you're basically kicking your own butt yeah Yeah. so running you can do it kind of slowly around a gym or on a treadmill or whatever you are and just take your hands behind your behind and then get your heels to effectively kick your hands all the time yeah again stretching is warming up your legs and just getting you ready for this exercise and arm swing you mentioned that with spaghetti arms yeah Yeah. arm swings flying around flailing arms (laughs) really good just to get everything stretched out get your shoulders and arms ready for this so this is you ready for exercise do your exercise routine and then we cool down why get the body back out of that mode i guess i don't know bring the heart rate down and the blood flow slows and One of the main reasons that we cool down is it effectively reduces muscle soreness. Okay, Mm. so without getting too scientific, when we're exercising, a lot of physiological changes happen within your body, which is so cool. It's so awesome. Like I said on the show before, right? When you do any form of exercise, I should say, your body releases a hormone, okay, which stops you going to the bathroom. Yeah. Unless you're really bursting, you have a lot of fluid in you vasopressin is the hormone that is released and it allows your body it tells your body basically wait a minute hold on to any water in case i need this yeah i don't want to dehydrate so how cool is that how does it know because once you kick yourself into action it just knows yeah how smart we all are so once your body starts exercise like i've said blood starts going to muscles muscles fill with lactic acid if you just walk out the gym and go home that lactic acid stays in your muscles and it becomes sore and mm-hmm. painful. So the next day you have what we call DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. This can also come from if you've just never really been yes. to a gym. So, yeah. you know, if you're sitting there thinking, I did heaps of cool down and I still had sore muscles. Yeah, you're awakening those muscles you've not used for a while. Exactly. Unfortunately, everybody knows that feeling. Exactly. It's like, well, you can't walk downstairs or you sit down. Yes. Oh. If you have not been in a gym for a long time or exercised in a long time, you'll have that. Mm-hmm. Or if you're overdoing it as well. Mm. If you are overusing your body, you'll find you get sore muscles. I live with constantly sore hamstrings <laughs> from yoga. I'm always bending forward. So I get, you know, pretty tight hamstrings. But a proper cool down is actually really important to keep you healthy. So you don't want to come to a sudden stop. Let's think about if you were doing quite a, a long run. Mm-hmm. Just think, think of a five kilometer run. If you just all of a sudden stopped, what do you think that would do to your heart, to your body, to your organs? Yeah, so it's very important to come out of that really gradually. So you'll never see a marathon runner well. Sometimes they collapse at the end, yeah. but there should be a little bit of a, a jog, a little taper off there. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the fit, fitter you are, the actual less time you need to come down from any sort of exercise. But you should always still have that cool down, that, that little walk it off. Walk it off, walk it off. You hear that quite a lot in, in yeah, gyms yeah. and things, okay? So you got to do that. And stopping abruptly, you know, it's not a good idea. It probably means that you'll injure yourself and that those muscles that you've perhaps injured or made sore, they're, it's likely to occur again because you've just... And people get into bad habits. Yeah. I've seen this in gyms. People just stop and they just walk out and yeah. it's become a habit. Or I've been to classes that I've actually taught or I've been a member of a class and people just don't do the, the cool down. Oh, I don't have time. But but you've, you've committed to doing this class. You've got to stay. This is the class. Warm up, exercise, cool down. You've got to do all of it. So the cool down portion, you know, also allows your blood to circulate back throughout your body and just calms all your oxygen and everything back to where it should be. The best part. It absolutely is. The cool down is the best part. The cool down is the best part. Because you've done part. all the hard work. 
It's Definitely. a little bit of a relax. Don't you like to, to do your cool down and think, oh, I deserve this. Yeah. Like if you're having stretching, you know, like it's a nice time to sort of think. What I love in yoga is if, if there's any people out there who regularly attend yoga classes, you'll know of a thing called Shavasana, which we do at the end of every yoga session. And that effectively just means recovery, like rest. It's just that you're just lying there surrendering. <laughs> but it's a really nice way to bring your heart rate down bring your breathing back down to normal and settle everything back to where it should be. Mm. So when you leave that session or that class, you're just the same as when you came in. Yeah. So it's a really important thing to do. So if any of you out there, you know, um, want to ask any questions then please do, but hopefully that person that asked that question have answered that for you and given you some good reasons. And you know, guys, if you are struggling out there to exercise on your own, find a trainer. There's lots of trainers here in Doha that can help you. Um, and I can help you find one if you, if you are struggling to find one. So certainly let me know. Fab. Well, uh, thank you very much. Welcome. I'm now going to be thinking about all of that when I'm warming up and cooling down in the yes. gym. Yes. Think about what goes on inside your body. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch up again with you on Monday next week. Yeah, back next week. We're going to talking about hydration again, guys, because we're coming to a hot, yeah. hot season. So it's going to be eight to hydrate. Eight different ways, unique ways. I'm hoping watermelon's in there. It might be. Oh, <laughs> we'll see you then. See you.